pharmacology, a career in science. Fire fun. be able to repeat it mm -hmm. time after time after time. So you have to have enough procedures and things in place so that uh, just like here, if you want, if we do those injections, everything, if you do everything the same every time, you say, well, see, I swiped them three times. One, yes. two, three. One, two, three. You, you, everything is, is done so that if you get out of whack and do it, something something just sort of strikes you as that doesn't seem like I did that quite right. This, with the gloves, this is called a lamper flow ice, glove box isolator. It's a nice way to try. <laughs> um, so they do have there's, uh, there's a motor behind here, you can see, you can hear it humming. There's a fan in there that runs, it has air blowing in there, circulating. And it goes through a HEPA filter. You see, we talked about HEPA, that term in, in chemistry and biology. And what it'll do, it'll, re it'll remove 99.9% .9 of particles, like one micron and larger. Very small particles. So they'll catch, they'll catch bacteria, things like that. So you have a, that, that air will come, we circulate through it from the HEPA filter. It'll clean it out, so you've got clean air washing down over everything that you have in here, going back out, and just recirculating through that filter so that all the air in here has less than one part per thousand floating around in it, one, one bacteria, whatever, and it's certified, so they come in and test it to make sure that your filters are running, and, by, and we have to have this done every six months to certify that this hood, what's going on in there, is a clean environment. People will use these if you're making IVs, making injectables, any number of things, and if you have a real big operation, the entire room like this will be built like this. Wow. So take this and blow it up exponentially. You have big filters. It's even harder to get big things. Yes, and the law is much more the same regulations apply to this little space inside here as it would for a clean room, what they call a clean room. So if you have a big operation where you're running a clean room, it's got to have steel or, or epoxy coated walls, solid ceilings. It's got to have circulating air, it's got to be tested every six months, floors, everything. And when you go in there, you have to have your head mask on, glasses, breathing mask, gloves, gown, foot covers, everything before you go in there. You have to scrub just like you were going into an operating room. So it's very expensive and you have to be doing a lot of sterile preparation to have a product like that. We don't do enough of it, so we have this and it fits all the regulations that, the law, that, that are law now. And it's just in its own little micro environment. This changes the pressure. This has what in here now is what it's a positive pressure, so there's more, a little bit more air pressure inside here than there is out here. That's why it's blowing these things out. Ah. And what that does is if you have, if you have just any kind of a little leak around a gasket or, or any any little breach in here, it's protecting. It's not blowing away. If you're using this hood for, uh, let's say. A chemotherapy drug that you're making for somebody. You're not, maybe not as you're. You're interested in keeping the sterile environment, so that this motor and the filters and everything are always working. But maybe you don't want to worry about this positive pressure, so you'll switch it over and make it into a negative pressure. The oh, motor's going to wow. reverse. <laughs> so what it's doing now, it's going to make the pressure in here. You'll see it's going to switch down over to the negative side. It's less pressure inside here than there is outside. So what that does for you, maybe a little bacteria guy might go in here. But if you're working in there and you and you have some of that uh, chemo drug, which is very toxic, you spill it or your, or your syringe slips and it sprays, and there's a little little gobulets of the drug get suspended in the air with the pressure like this. The, if there is any openings out here, the air is being sucked in, so that drug in there is not going to come out 
so it gives you a second level of protection for the operator. So when you and how is that removed? It's then circulated again. The filters in there and circulate in okay. there. And if you if it was severe enough uh, spill, there's procedures you have to go through with a chemical spill kit to clean and disinfect it. If it was too much that got aromatized and got up into the filters, you might have to have the filters replaced because you don't want to open it up and then have it blow back on you. But that just by doing that, that that's sucking air into the machine, for lack of a better term, and that's that's for operator protection there. So what's an example of something you'd actually do in there? You, you mentioned IVs, but... Do IVs? Uh, where do you, how do you... So now we just get out of all of your supplies. And this is the same procedure that they would use if you were making, you know, any, any, any kind of uh, injectable medications. You know, this thing's been sealed, it's been cleaned, and we've used it. We did use it for something today. You don't really know whether there's anything on the gloves or not. So huh. you just take one more step, hmm. sterilizing your gloves, so that whatever you're touching, you're pretty sure is going to be clean. Again, we go to the alcohol, everything is, no matter what's in here, you act like it's not sterile and we sterilize again. Do everything all in one direction so that if there's anything on there, it's being brushed away from it. It's not oh. being drugged back over your stopper. We're going to use two cc's of this, so we're going to shoot in the air to replace the volume that we're taking out. So there's no air or anything going in there. And we just take our little tiny hood here and we can open up and get our stuff out of it. Containment system like this to keep it from getting out of the air. Don't do all the manipulations in here. There might be a scale in here and there might have a uh, hot plate and you know, any number of different things. And they'll keep these things clean and running all the time. Say just the, the weight of the drug itself might be so little that you can't put it in a capsule. You might have, you know what I'm saying, with a capsule, something like this. Well, there's only 10 milligrams of drug in there. Where well, you have that little capsule with just a little, uh, yeah, just a, like the head of a pin is the active ingredient. So you got to put something else in there so you can manipulate that and and get it dispersed evenly and get it to fill a capsule up. So you can use something. Like
Motrin because maybe there's only one tenth of one percent of the people in the country, if that, that need something like that. It's not profitable. Everything's driven by profit. Everything. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have a patient that has a need like that, that's where we come in and custom make these sort of things for them. We can do it for that one patient because it's just it's just me and the patient and the doctor. That's so you only have three people involved taking care of this, take care of the one person as opposed to three billion people in the drug company saying they gotta make one just for you. It's just no it's just impossible to do that. So that's the niche that we fill is, is taking care of these people that have a you know need like that. It's hard for you to to fathom right. about it, but if you understand it, you amaze yourself once you get to my age how much you've done between your age and my age that you've used chemistry. Yeah. But you never think of it as chemistry. Right. But it's uh, uh, it's just something that you use daily without even without even knowing it. And uh, <laughs> so were you uh, mixing things up and blowing up things at home when you were a young guy? <laughs> No Did your mother have to contend with exploding I, things, or some? <laughs> I had two, I had three other brothers, so we could blame it on one, somebody else. So it was, uh, That's uh, funny. It, it was just something that, that you know you you, you, you learned and yeah. say, hey, I know about chemistry. I can keep on going and find it more enjoyable. But I couldn't do the things that you're interested in. That's art and that that sort of thing. I couldn't sit down and draw something or use my imagination to make something. But if I can draw a straight line or a, or a, a, a formula or something, I can understand that. So it's all uh, there's a little different part of the brain that, that yeah. is, works a little uh, exactly. Uh, that's a little more attuned, I think, to different things. And that's if you find that little part and you enjoy it, you go with it. So it's, well, that's great. Teacher? Wow, this looks, looks like a candy shop. Yeah. 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 I want some of this. <laughs> it looks like a candy machine. Yeah, it looks like this jelly beans. This is our new it machine. Does. It puts out the drugs like really fast. Huh. So you don't have to, the text don't have to count That's it. That's amazing. There's one or two of them in the sink every day. So you do Constantly. physically grind things by hand? Constantly. Um, you might have to take tablets and crush them and then blend it with something else to alter the dose. You just say you're getting 10, uh, you, need, you need 10 milligrams and this only comes in a 100 milligram tablet, so you can take it, crush it, mix it with something else, package it at lower doses. So we use those, everything from, from crushing to blending powders. So if you take all your powders and put them in there and blend them up and crush them real good, and get you try to get everything uniform, all the powder size is the same. Mm -hmm. And then we'll use that again to pack capsules. Uh, that's what all this is. Pharmacology is a little bit more specific. Oh. Yeah, I mean pharmacology, like what's your, what's behind your name? What's your pharmacy? Your, your I mean, you your could credentials? get more specialized in pharmacology, especially like people that go into drug research and that kind of thing, can specialize in pharmacology. Um, pharmacy is kind of like an overview of everything. Like, there is pharmacology included, but it's not like I have, um, you know, a master's degree in pharmacology. Right. You can go on and get a master's degree in pharmacology. So it's more specialized, is that yes. what you're saying? Kind of like a doctor would then become a specialist in something. Right. Okay. You can specialize in pharmacology, but... Huh. Okay, cool. Interesting. All right, let's All right. go. She's busy. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you're you. welcome. <laughs> um, okay. okay.